Hey friends, welcome to Origami Review, and today we're going to be taking a look at the best origami samurai in the world. I am super excited to bring you guys this episode, but before we get into it, I want to tell you guys a little bit about NordVPN. That's right, we're kind of like the cool YouTubers, and we have a link in the description for a discount off NordVPN. What is NordVPN? Well, recently there's been a lot of issues with data security and data privacy amongst any kind of internet platform you can think of. If you want to secure your network usage and your internet usage, definitely check out NordVPN. But yeah, you guys probably all heard it before. Link in the description. Let's get into this episode. All right, let's jump into this episode. And if you guys make it to the end of this video, I got a small announcement that I think you guys will think it's cool, but let's, let's, let's get into it. Um, yes, we are talking about Origami Samurai and specifically three origami samurai that in my opinion i think are the most successful origami samurai designs um so far and so first of all we have my samurai of course i haven't really even plugged this samurai too much on my channel besides the tutorials we're gonna look at mine we're going to look at carol kafarski's and we're going to look at yuho's and specifically again in my opinion i think yuho's samurai is the best origami samurai ever number two is carol kafarski's and then number three is mine and you know that again that's my opinion might be a hot take but uh yeah you guys can debate in the comments but let's see why you hose is better than any other origami samurai design and we're going to start off with a concept called the uncanny valley and this actually applies to many humanoid origami figures and humanoid art so let's explain that a little bit to realize why Yuho's Samurai is so, so good. All right, so this is Uncanny Valley, and I'm going to try to explain it. I learned about this concept actually from Corridor Digital, but you can do your own research on this. Uh, there's, there's much more research, and uh, this concept is kind of off Wikipedia, so hopefully I can explain it. But in simple terms, this is a curve of specifically human faces and the positive or negative emotional responses to them. So on this end would be very realistic uh, representations of a human face, maybe a photorealistic drawing. On the other side is less like a human, you know, but it still conveys uh, kind of the likeness of a human. So this would be cartoon characters, uh, anime, you know, things that are obviously not realistic, you know, they're so different, but they still convey a positive emotional response as a human. This valley in the middle represents the portion of where kind of human likeness actually causes a negative response emotionally, where despite it maybe having more details or trying to be more realistic, really looks less human than say an anime character or like a cartoon show character. Um, so that's basically the premise of the Uncanny Valley. Now, how does this kind of approach the origami humanoid genre and especially between those three samurais where do they sit along this line so we're going to go in reverse order of my ratings and so we're going to start off with mine where does mine sit originally my samurai didn't have a face at all pretty much any humanoid model that doesn't have a face resides in this area and the more successful ones you know are at this peak uh, mine is about here i would say because my goal wasn't to give it a realistic face Obviously, there are facial features, but they were not heading towards like a photorealistic approach in order that it can still be a successful looking finished product that has some additional detail, but it wouldn't fall into the valley. Where does Carol sit? Carol sits a bit more on this side as well, where it doesn't necessarily have less detail or is less human than mine, but it's more successful than mine. It definitely conveys a samurai more than mine. Um, the mass structure and just the folds he uses, it's a lot cleaner, a lot more detailed, and I think people will recognize it a lot more than mine. Maybe just a little bit, um, but that's where I put Carol's. Now, Yuho's, why is it the best? Why is it the absolute best? And that's because it is on this side of the mark. Yuho's is going for photorealistic. If you take a look at samurai masks, uh, you know, like images of real samurai masks, you can tell that the mask is very exact to Yuho's um, origami depiction. And even the way that Yuho does the eyes, they're obviously not photorealistic, 
but the proportions of the helmet are going to really convey the eyes and the shape of the cheeks and the mouth a lot better than anything that's ever you know been done so far uh, but yeah let's take a look at some of these actual models and i'm going to be referring to this uncanny valley as we go about it all right so here we are taking a look at yuho's absolutely stunning samurai design and if you guys actually haven't seen this before this model has gone viral you know millions of people have seen it it's been on a lot of internet blogs different youtube shows uh, it's it's everywhere it's amazing um huge props to yuho you guys if you haven't followed him already you got to you know check it out now at least drop a like leave a comment tell him how amazing it is but yes let's get into it and kind of reference where the uncanny valley um sits uh, according to this model so kind of what is representing let's take a look at the face first so for starters the mask is so detailed and if you guys want a closer look again go to his instagram here and zoom in it's absolutely stunning and besides the mask in the mouth and the shape with the nose the cheek structures stick out you can kind of see he folded in a cheek structure with this mask um a crazy detail you know you don't ever see that in you know the normal plain flat face is just round right cheekbones you know this is absolutely legendary and if anyone's done um more academic drawing and you've tried to draw photorealistic faces i think a lot of the time when you're learning you want to understand the structure of the eye shape not the eyeball shape but like your skull you know the eye socket the eye socket comes first then the eye Obviously, Yuho's doesn't have the eyeball. I think that would push it into the valley a little bit because origami. You can't have two colored eyes, or at least in this case, it's not. But what he does have is he has the eye sockets. And that really adds both detail and realism to this model. And especially if this was a samurai mask, sometimes they have like eye coverings and you wouldn't be able to see their eyes. It'd be shadowed. So in the term of technicalities, this is right on point. Besides that, the other technicalities of this design, the proportions are spot on. Um, the detail is clean. It's very advanced, especially for origami, but there are so, so many details. Um, so for before jumping back into kind of my emotional response that I get from looking at this model, let's look at some of those details. All right, so we're gonna deep dive on some of Yuho's details in his samurai. As he mentioned in the description, he says this is one of its most detailed designs, and I agree. So let's see both those details and why they're successful. Because um, you can have a lot of details and be unsuccessful. Um, first of all, obviously the face, we kind of talked about that already, but let's take a look at this armor, right? He's got these partial grid pleats that he uses to make the sheet of armor. And a lot of times the samurai armor would be plated kind of like that. And here you can really tell. And a lot of times, if we're gonna look at my samurai later, I did a really janky way of doing partial pleats and you can tell that it's not quite as clean in this case yuho's pleats are really clean especially in the shoulder pads again my shoulder pads on my samurai they're similar they're using pleats but they're much less clean because they're not actual structures yuho folded these in as actual pleats and they look stunning next thing we can notice this is a box pleat model normally box pleat models look very grid like um, or if i should say boxy and you can see a lot of layers between areas such as arms legs all that kind of things we're going to take a look at some of the different angles on this but you can probably already tell he hides these layers really well by rounding out the limbs and when he rounds out the limbs he's not puffing it out um i don't think you know he actually uh, yuho he, he does most things purely so there's probably no cotton or I can probably confidently say there's no cotton stuffed in to make these arms round. He did it using his hands and his dexterity to shape it. Um, oftentimes cotton will instantly give away that it's being used. It's, it's quite obvious when it's being used to round something out. Uh, in this case, Yuho just nails the cleanliness of it by taking the time to actually round out everything proportionally from the arms, the legs, everything. If we get the side view, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. We have a distinguished elbow joint. We have greaves. We have the wrist armor coming out. The hands are proportional. 
um, it's really grabbing the sword you know there's all these kind of details with the arm the shape the proportion that make this samurai so so successful another thing is a lot of times my designs if you notice are very skinny and they're skinny either you know this way or width wise i, I guess yuho he, he has enough breath to make the armor seem believable and that just adds to the aesthetic of the model um, you can kind of see here as we rotate around the samurai what i'm talking about now we're on the back the back is closed which is a small thing in origami normally we don't care if it's closed underside closed back closed belly but when it is it is origami wise an extreme technical detail and so in this case yuho did just exact that and for this to be possible there's some asymmetry going on and this model might be mostly symmetrical but in part of the crease pattern whatever part he hasn't released the crease pattern he left space to do the pleats on the back side which completes the i guess synergy between the back plate uh, armor with the front plate and all those pleats and it just makes the entire model look good no matter what angle you're looking at that is a stunning detail and that's not easy to do and definitely not easy to do clean um, this hides a lot of the back pleats that you'd normally see from a box plate model and since those are gone oh it looks real good looks real real good and once again fully from the back side you can kind of see how the legs have a lot of proportion it really looks like the armor is sitting on top of his legs and same thing with the arms it looks like it's sitting on top of the arms stunning i've i haven't seen anything like this it's it's really good um that kind of feel is what's similar to why i think carol's samurai is really success, successful but yuho adds a ton more detail um and you know it's it's just insane besides the armor if you just look at the sword the sword has a guard like like a katana the blade looks sharp and the sheath actually has a slot where the sword would you know insert um, all these small attentions to detail see right here you can see the opening the samurai is out of this world it's insane it's so good and last but not least let's admire these pleats or scales or whatever you want to call them on the the chainmail skirt the armor skirt or you know <laughs> again whatever you want to call it these things stand out so well and if anyone has done kind of the scale technique they know that there's some fancy transitions going on to make these happen one yuho did these really clean two there's a lot of them so these partial pleats are small um yuho mentions he uses a 95 by 95 centimeter sheet and definitely it's gonna need that to get these details in um, so yeah both on an aesthetic side and a technical design side this model is packed it's super cool um i don't think there's anyone in the world that could fold this design better than yuho it stands out that much but yeah let's get into a little bit of the emotional response all right so referencing the uncanny valley uh kind of chart i showed this is really pushing the photorealistic side now obviously things are made out of paper and i can definitely tell that this is an origami model this isn't like a sculpture or anything um, which is great i love that but i can't look at this and think of anything other than a samurai and because of that emotional response that positive emotional response that this is a samurai i find that so successful not only do i think this is a samurai i think a person is inside that samurai it looks human it looks very believable that someone could put on this armor you know and walk around <laughs> with a sword drawn and be super cool uh it's it's just that good you know i could see this as a full set the way the photography's done you know i think the average samurai was like five four five six if this was put into that proportion and i saw it it could be real samurai armor i think that success in the uncanny valley is really important I don't think anyone would argue that oh this is this doesn't look like a samurai you know everyone's gonna look at it and be like that's a samurai that's really cool even non-folders they're like oh it's a samurai and then when they see it's origami then poof, their, their minds are blown you know um so yeah i think 
emotional response wise this is so cool there's a lot of things you can draw out of just looking at this samurai the effort put in just kind of the concept of what yuho wanted to achieve with this model um despite the pose you know it's just standing he's got his sword out you can still draw that emotional connection that hey that's another human being in a really cool suit of armor so yeah once again amazing job yuho now let's take a look at samurais in the rank number two and number three and kind of compare why they don't quite match up to yuho's design again guys this isn't any competition or anything i just want to break down why this is such a game-changing design and also how good the other samurais are um, but you know maybe what they haven't achieved according to this one all right so we are shifting models here and taking a look at carol kafarski's amazing samurai this is such a cool model this is what inspired me to design my own samurai or at least even want to design my own samurai so many years ago um, but yeah, this is an absolutely legendary samurai design. I love it so much. Let's talk about it. So what has Carol done? What's really good about this model? Um, one of the strong points on Yuho's that I mentioned is it looks like the armor is sitting on top of a human. And you can very evidently see that by the waist folds, the leg armor, and of course the chest armor. There's detail that shows the chest pleat separate from the straps that go up the shoulders. And that is really cool and really effectively uses folds of paper to you know convey this design there's no sort of mushing at all with this model everything is an intentional detail folded as part of the design now of course let's take a look at the face um, you know what's the technical aspects of it and how does it line up in the uncanny valley so if we take a look here it definitely has a lot of detail like I said, everything is a fold, both the nose, the rim of the helmet that covers the eyes, um, the structure for the chin, super amazing. I love the overall shape of the helmet and with the horns, they look really cool. They look just like, you know, the actual like Kabuto helmet. Um, on the emotional side, I've mentioned I put it on the opposite side of the valley as Yuho's, where it's not trying to be photorealistic but it's still conveying human likeness and a lot of positive you know reaction emotional reaction that this is a human and why is that even though it has a lot of details on the face well for one carol was smart and he didn't try to do eyes he has it covered by the mask and that kind of plays um you know uh, the same kind of strategy a little bit in mind um, where, yeah, you know, we're not going to get photorealistic eyes. Um, and especially with Carol's design approach, he's not going to mush in eyes. You know what I'm saying? And because of that, obviously it takes some detail of realism away, but it adds to the emotional response. It adds to the success of it. Kind of same thing for the mouth. There's not really a mouth, but when you look at it, you, you can see the chin. You can see, okay, it's like a mask. It doesn't need a mouth to tell you that this is a human. This is a samurai. Um, and again, to that, very successful. Obviously, there's a nose, and that adds to the realism a little bit, but just enough to keep it in that positive spotlight without going overboard on the details. I think a lot of times, if people try to force in like eyes and nose and mouths, and by mushing or just you know trying to pull flaps or rounding out, sure, it look it's nice, but it can fall further down into the uncanny valley in which this, this case, the fold, it stays up on the outside of the valley. Beyond that, <laughs> just take a look at some of the design structures that Carol has. So this samurai, he doesn't have fingers, but he's holding the sword, and he's holding the sword real well. In addition to his sword, he's got both the short samurai sword sheath and the other samurai sword sheath, a lot of times uh, samurai would carry two. I'm not a samurai expert, but you'll notice them. They'll carry a shorter sword and then their main sword. Um, and each one has different uses. You know, I think the short sword was a little bit more tactical. You could cut wood, you could carve out animals, all that kind of stuff. Um, that, that detail's in here, and that's a really cool detail. The asymmetry that's used to create that is also a very notable design um, technique absolutely amazing um, the armor he has kind of the same pleat effect and almost the scale effect as Yuho's obviously not pushed as far 
but it's super successful. And once again, the limbs are very proportional. Um, you can tell Carol, he knows what a human body is like very well. And because it's so proportional, it really adds to this model. And to wrap up, again, this is there's no competition. This is just kind of an analysis. But one of the things that this samurai is lacking that Yuho's has is just the extra detail. So if we zoom in a little bit and you look at the arms, you can see that he folded in the arms, but it's still, there's like an indentation, right? It's not a rounded out arm. Same, same thing with the legs. There's a little bit of dimension, but it's gonna be concave when you look at it from the back. And that can still look nice. It definitely makes it look origami, but Yuho took the time to, again, round out the limb so it looks good from every single angle. Um, this samurai is missing that just a little bit. Um, again, it doesn't detract, I don't think, from what you know Carol's intention was. Um, if you were to fold this and do the rounded out limbs, I actually think that would take away. I think it'd fall into the valley. It's just not a part of this design, um, if that makes any sense. But other than that, I really like this design. The This sword specifically has the guard, which is really cool. Um, and yeah, this model is super successful. It's still really legendary. Um, if you guys want to try to fold it, the crease pattern looks kind of scary. But again, this is so, so cool. Um, definitely check out Carol's origami stuff. There, he's got a lot, a lot of cool stuff. Um, link in the description. Go check him out. And now we are finally on the last samurai we're talking about. And this is my samurai. And we're going to talk about, again, a little bit about the Uncanny Valley and also just the technical standpoint of my design. So what are some things I think went well with this design? What were my intentions when I made this design? Obviously, it comes from the original Samurai version 3, which was far left on the Uncanny Valley. There was no face. There wasn't even a helmet. It had a rice hat, right? It was a stylistic choice that I made. And it also fit it along that left side, so I didn't have to try to make it look realistic to still convey that this was a samurai. Um, obviously, this version has a face and a mask, and this was a challenge that I saw from understanding origami structures a little bit better and also just improving my shaping that, hey, I could take the existing structure and, and make a face with it, you know? Um, one of the most notable things about this design is the eyes. You know, the eyes really give way to the face. The eyes are, again, just the eye sockets, but not very even eye sockets. It's more like the brim of the skull over the eyes. And it was just to provide shadow and a little bit of depth that there might be eyes there. And that's all I wanted to do because if I pushed it any further, which I definitely tried to push it a little further, you know, maybe a flat for the eye, it just looked awful. It dove straight down into the valley. That adding detail took so much away from the design as a whole. Other than that, I do have a nose and like a mouth structure a little bit, and that just uses techniques from origami masks, um, which, you know, there's a, a lot of cool ones of those that actually are very photorealistic. But with thin paper like this, you know, I was just trying the best I could. Um, so as it adds a little bit of detail, it still pushes it on the left side. I think where my design personally falls off a little bit is that my execution isn't as good. And I think that's what most other origami samurai designs or you know, the simple samurai helmets, or if someone else tried to fold this, where that would be the main struggle is execution. Uh, both Carol and Yuho, their designs were extremely good, but the execution of both the folding and the shaping are beyond, you know, anyone else's samurais. They're, they're technically complete, they're design complete, and they're executed so perfectly well. Um, what I mean by my lack of execution here is, one, again, the, sh the face, the pleats are very evident. It's a little sloppy. And you can kind of see, I think my main critique that I receive from a lot of people is the arms feel disconnected from the body. And that's due to the box pleat nature. You can visibly see the box pleat pleats um, and that the joint uh, here, there's, there's a huge gap that's, that's not realistic. If you tried to fit a human arm through that, the human arm would be, you know, cut off. It'd be tied up too tight. It, it couldn't happen. Um, 
and in that sense, while maybe the samurai looks like it's wearing the armor on the chest, it's not the case for the arms. Um, same thing with the way I did the pleats. You know, I find it to be kind of creative just using the paper to fit in some of these extra details, but they're not executed very well. They're a little sloppy. They're a little mushy. Um, you know, it's 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 a little. I, I'm not saying it's horrible, but it's not as successful. You can see actually the difference between the samurai on the left and the right is while the legs they're both concave like this, they have a little bit of of meat to them. Um, the legs similar to kind of what Carol's has, um, but on this one the arm I tried to puff out the arm, and I think it was successful for this fold of the samurai. However, again, it wasn't executed as cleanly. There's evident signs of like a bit of mushing because it was just made from a box plate layer. Unlike Yuho's that was very nicely round and all the seams were intentional for, you know, a specific elbow joint or the end of the bracers, that kind of thing. Um, I still very much like this design. I'm still very proud of this samurai. And again, I'm not trying to compete my samurai versus anyone else's samurai design so please guys it's not a competition don't say whatever you know just it's they're they're all cool you know or maybe they're not cool i don't know but uh still very proud of this design i think my strong point is the way i pose them um <laughs> this one on the left isn't posed at all but this one on the right it's it's, it's kind of cool you know he's having a, a guard position i studied some one-handed sword guards um, just to make it kind of functional. I have the sheath on the hip in just kind of a unique way that I can keep the model symmetrical but make it look asymmetrical. And I think that's kind of the main aspect that when non-folders see this design for the first time, their minds are absolutely blown as well. Um, this design is my most viewed. Uh, I think it has like 3 million views on TikTok. It's, which is more than anything I've ever seen. So this is maybe my most successful model, um, at least on social media. And so, yeah, I'm very proud of it, but I recognize there's, yeah, I still have improvements I can make on the Samurai. It's, you know, almost falling into the uncanny valley, but it's still pretty cool. And if you guys want to fold it, I have that full length tutorial, even for this shaping, which is part of the DLC shaping tutorials small plug uh, just to talk about my samurai but yeah i still very much like it um, but that's kind of why i placed it behind my other two favorite samurai designs if you know what i mean but yeah let's finish up here enough talk about my samurai um and i guess samurais and i hope you guys enjoyed that discussion a little bit on my analysis of the best samurai design in the world and the second best samurai design in the world. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Yuho's design is actually game changing. Because it went so viral, it brought the true aspect, the true capabilities of super complex origami into the spotlight where a lot of people used to think, oh, cranes, you know, modulars. And now people will think Yuho samurai. Um, so huge props to Yuho. Y Yuho, he's, I don't know if you guys have commented things. He's really nice. The, the guy's humble, even though he got these, you know, all this social media traffic and everything. Uh, so give him a follow, leave him a really nice comment. He pushed the origami community into the spotlight. So, um, you know, you'll, you should be very proud of Yuho and his epic design if you're a part of the community. Um, so yeah, definitely go give him a follow. Give him all the support. Check out his website. Everything's linked below. Just stare at the design. I don't know. Appreciate it. It deserves it. All right, and this wouldn't be an origami review if we didn't actually review some other origami. So while we're on the subject of humanoid models, let's take a look at another amazing humanoid model. Uh, this one comes from Paper Forger, which, you know, you've seen him from previous episodes. And this is such a stunning origami angel design. Now, you gotta look at this closely because there's a lot of details in this one and I really love it. I love both the pose, I love the different details, the proportions of everything, and just kind of the whole vibe of this um, origami model. So let's take a look at some details. Fantastic wings, individual feathers, super cool. They're not just in one dimension, there's like layers of feathers. 
super neat. The dress is beautiful. The legs are shaped very nicely. Um, the angel holding a staff and a book. That kind of asymmetry, you know, it, that's mind blowing. That's so cool. Um, very detailed structure and design uh, processes there. Um, this is a box fleet model, and using that to his advantage, Paper Forger actually added a halo on top of the head of the angel. And this is such a smart move. Obviously, there's a little bit of a connecting uh, part here because it has to be, but the essence of this halo is it's so cool, it's so creative, and the rest of it's just flowing. The hair is beautiful as well. Um, the photography is pretty genius using the black and the clear cup to hold up the model all around amazing uh go check out paper forger stuff links in the description now in the course of time that passed between last origami review episode there's been some amazing designs coming out uh one of them by kota imai and that is a new insect now i'm not actually showing kota's fold here but i'm showing david's fold or origami drw of that model and there's no way I'm going to be able to pronounce that, but I think it's the Chilean stag beetle, but it is so complex. There's so many spikes on this insect, and David folded it so well. The execution on this insect is beyond, you know, anything, you know, relative to it, and it, oh, it's so cool. So if you haven't seen Kota's, like, progress pictures, he teased a lot of parts of this model as he was folding it. One being the detailed underbelly. And this uses something similar to his tarantula, where it's like the magic ball structure that kind of gives like the fuzzy, you know, insect spike. I don't know what the scientific term is, but another dimension of complexity and detail to this insect. The underside is just as detailed as the top. Obviously, we can't ignore these spines. Some of the legs have two rows of spines. Um, David folded all the joints of this insect very, very well. And yeah, man, those spines, they're so clean. None of them look mushed at all. They're all very specific to the crease pattern. Um, that really plays a huge part in the success of this model. This thing's very complex. Uh, as you can see, he spent a lot of time on this model. And this is something that's truly a super complex origami model. Huge props to you david amazing job folding this this is this is really really good and we're not stopping there pretty much everything david folds is amazing we're going to take a look at his new design and this is the awakening that's the title and it's it's basically a gravestone uh, with rip and then as you can see there's an awakening happening yikes grab your shotgun no i'm just kidding but this is a redesign i guess of one of his Older designs, same concept, but this is executed very, very well and much better than his old design because not only is there an awakening, but it's actually grabbing another arm, another separated arm. That's that's such a cool detail. Like, just, just look at that. That's so cool. This is a natural color change model as well, and it's done so well. The letters on the tombstone, right? Color changed, and it's clean color changed. Uh, if you've done any kind of flat folding color change model before, you might be familiar with some of the techniques. And to combine that with like a 3D origami design, again, mind blowing. Huge props, David. This is super cool. Guys, if you don't follow David, check out all his folds. You're going to like all of them. They're, they're so, so good. Um, so yeah, origami underscore DRW on Instagram. David, fantastic, man. Fantastic. And lastly, I'm going to feature this whole Instagram account. This is Almond underscore Origami. And Almond's a little bit new to Instagram, but his folds are, oh, they're so good. Like, uh, again, there's not too many, but each one is really well done. So, guys, go follow Almond Origami. Convince him to fold more because it's so good. Um, kind of talking about the right side of the spectrum. And this is a rendition of Satoshi Kamiya's ox design but realism right we have an eyeball exhibit a <laughs> but this is really well done for real amazing folding almond definitely deserved a shout out all, all these are really cool i love this tree frog and the ox and pretty much everything so go check out almond's account 
drop a follow, drop some nice comments, go observe the way he folds, and convince him to fold more. And that wraps up this episode of Origami Review. Thank you everyone for watching, and if you made it this far, you would know that there's a little announcement coming. Um, so what is that announcement? Let me show you guys. Uh, this is something I've been working on pretty hard the past couple days, and this is my website. So as you can see from the URL, it is just obb.design, and I'm putting a lot of effort into this website, one, as a easy way to access you know, all of my content spread across social media platforms, YouTube, Instagram, my merch store, my diagrams I'm selling, uh, TikTok, uh, tutorials. In addition to that, I also wanna provide resources to you guys. Um, and so if you can check that out, I've put together both paper resources for all levels of folders. You know, maybe you're watching this and you're still, you know, a beginner intermediate folder, or maybe in a complex folder, but you wanna learn what kind of papers do I recommend what kind of things can I trust? I have descriptions for those, for people who want to learn how to treat their own paper. Yeah, there's a lot of YouTube videos and tutorials on it, but where can you find a good setup to do so? Got a paper kit. Go check those out, guys. I'm still working on it a little bit, but I hope you enjoy. Uh, and it would be supporting to the channel if you guys checked out this website. I think I did a pretty decent job at it. But yeah, that wraps up this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, check out all the links in the description. Drop a like, leave a comment, um, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and I'll see you guys in future episodes. Thanks so much. All this origami, all this origami, all this origami got me going kamikaze now. I'm